Hello, uh, I would just want to show you something I've been working on. Like there's a lot of talk on observables and reducers and functional programming and all this stuff. Um, and uh, there's so many different solutions to how you can use these things. Take for example Redux. Uh, you have like the layer where you do your complex state changes, asynchronous state. Uh, changes um, that's like the action creator or the thunk middleware but there are other projects as well like um, redux loop which is like uh, an elm implementation uh, elm like implementation of handling these uh, side effects uh, where you actually return a side effect inside your maybe we can just look at it uh, git uh, redux loop so uh, the way this works is inside your yeah so here we have a reducer like we normally know it with state and action but as you can see here you can return um, the state change and some effects and unlike elm where you can just return one effect i believe or maybe no i suppose you can batch stuff there as well uh, anyways um, you return an effect when you make the state change but then you have like redux saga which does not is not inside the reducer but it's like instead of the thunk uh, middleware uh, I believe uh, so apply middleware yeah saga middleware and is there an example no there's no example there but this is using generators to give you uh, allow you to do like synchronous asynchronous code like you see here so instead of using them on promises and stuff like that you get this synchronous uh, synchronicity to it uh, which is uh, kind of nice but there is a lot of stuff to understand here you have this call stuff and put and, and all that uh, and I haven't looked into it so it's probably a lot easier than than what I'm saying now but the point here is there are so many different solutions and then we have uh, observables uh, I don't know if there is like an observable uh, project specifically like a middleware using observables there probably is uh, redux observable middleware uh, yeah so uh, there's something here where you well, this seems to be inside the reducer, but yeah, anyways, the point is there's a lot of different solutions there. And um, I was looking at, the, the point is that you have two different things. You want to make state changes and you want to handle what's called side effects. That's like a concept. Uh, and I thought I would try to implement like a basic, basic, basic thing using RxJS. So uh, the way this works is that, huh? I hope I in. Anyways, uh, the way this works is that, uh, I, yeah, and of course, first I'm using Horizon to test this. If you haven't heard of Horizon, it's awesome. Uh, it's like open source Firebase. It was just released and it's amazing. Uh, and all of its API is based on observables, unlike other solutions. Uh, so this is really, really exciting to see not only how you can use the functionality of Horizon, but also how you use their APIs, uh, since it's based on observables. Um, so let's see here. Okay, so I have my Horizon client and I have this RxJS app, this tiny lib I created, uh, which has an init function and a dispatch function. Then I have a couple of reducers there, and they are normal reducers. I have some initial state, I import some action constants, and I create my reducer, which just changes the state. Okay, so nothing magical about that at all. And then we have the effects. And these are side effects. So with Horizon, a typical side effect is, as you can see here, I need to connect to Horizon, I need to store a message, I need to watch the messages collection. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about all the awesomeness in Horizon, but but um, but these are the side effects I'm, I'm playing around where, uh, with here in this uh, small demo. 
Um, and then I import some action constants again. And then I create my app. And the way I create the app is that I just want a state stream. I just want a stream I can subscribe to to get the state changes of the application. It being just a normal dispatch into a reducer or it being handled by some side effect uh, and all that goodness. Um, and what I pass into this application is the reducers I have and the effects I have. And that's all. I just shove in reducers and effects and then I am uh, allowed to dispatch stuff. And these dispatches will be handled by the reducers um, and the effects. Uh, and yeah, and of course I just subscribe to the state stream here. I don't uh, do anything now, but this is where you would uh, create your UI or you would uh, put it into like some kind of context provider for React or something um, to make it easier to extract state. Okay, but let's take a look at what's happening now when I fire up the app. Okay, uh, so the kind of cool thing is that I was able to, um, I think it's important to express the flow of the application in a more human readable way, especially when you have these side effects. Because when you handle side effects like Elm, it becomes, um, or, or handle side effects uh, the way you kind of do it in Elm, it makes it harder to read the code. And what I mean about that is like with Cerebral, you define all these side effects and everything as a decision tree or a behavior tree. So you just read everything in, in one file. Uh, and that makes it very easy for you to understand what happens when this single request for a state change happens. You just read everything down and, and you know it. But in here, I have to, for example, if I connect to Horizon, uh, I, uh, I will go through this later, but I will return a message called connect Horizon success. Now the thing is, this is going to be picked up by something else. Uh, and actually it's going to be picked up by another uh, side effect. So this one is checking the connect horizon success and then does something else. And the point is that it's harder because you have to jump between all the different files. So you don't have one file expressing everything that is happening when I initially try to connect to horizon. Um, okay. Let's uh, look some more into this now. So uh, what happens is that I'm logging everything that's happening to, to give you an overview of what's going on inside the application. So first of all, we have this connect horizon action. And I'm just saying that it triggered an effect. There was some effect that wanted to handle this. And then it tries to change the state, but there were no actual state changes. Um, in the reducers, um, so it just went straight through. Uh, and I can look at uh, the state at that point in time. Uh, but then I uh, got a new action here, connect horizon success, and that was returned from an effect called connect horizon. So if we look into the code, I have an effect here called connect horizon, which is this one. And as we can see, it returned connect horizon success. And that also triggered an effect, and it uh, made a uh, it was passed into a reducer, and it actually made a change on the horizon object. So I can see uh, currently I can just see which reducer, but I could also implement that you saw exactly what field changed, and how the values changed. Uh, anyways, mm, and then we see that okay, we get an update message which is returned from an effect called watch messages. And that's passed into a reducer, which changes the messages. So this is, this is kind of nice. This gives you this overview that is hard to reason about just looking at the code. Um, now, uh, let's look at one of these effects. Let's look at, okay, I'm in Connect Horizon. So the way you do this in this RxJS app is that you have something called an action effect. Like an effect can be any observable. But uh, I created like a small factory that's called action effect. And what it basically does is just uh, filter out the action stream 
and uh, based on what I pass in here, it will just filter on that. So this action effect will only handle Connect Horizon actions. And then I map that to Connecting to Horizon. Uh, and that is actually uh, that is actually an observable, uh, I believe. And messages connect. Oh, I think this is some old code here. This shouldn't have messages. Um, sorry, and this should be a flat map because we are returning. Let's see if it still works. Now it doesn't work. Oh, that was strange. I thought. Horizon connect returned on observable, so you need to use flat map. But let's see here. Sorry about this. Uh, let's see. Messages. Where is messages? Undefined. Yeah, so definitely not messages here. But I, I wonder why I don't have to use flat map because I think horizon.connect returns on observable. Uh, but maybe it doesn't. It probably doesn't. Um, and, and this is <laughs> kind of like with observables, it's not as straightforward. Uh, you have to know about the internals of observables to understand their op operators. But okay, uh, so basically Horizon Connect does not return an observable. If it did do that, I would have to use, and it returned a value, I would have to use flat map to actually receive the value here. Um, but okay, uh, so it just connects to no, it has to be. I don't really understand this. It should be flat map uh, because it waits for the connection to actually uh, for it to actually connect before it returns this. Uh, shit, this is strange. Okay, give me a second. I have to figure this out. You know, I actually couldn't figure this one out. Um, I have no idea why I have to use map pair and not flat map uh, because it is an observable. But yeah, maybe someone else can answer that. The point here is that uh, this is a side effect that takes an action and returns uh, this connection. And it will only run map when the connection is actually established. Um, and that is type connect horizon success. So that is what we're seeing up here. Connect horizon, triggered an effect. And then we got the connect horizon success return from the effect connect horizon. Um, and then we have the watch messages, uh, which hooks into a messages collection in, in horizon. Um, it listens to the connect horizon success. And here we use flat map uh, watching this uh, messages collection. And this is a running subscription. Um, so when I return this and I map to update messages, whenever this collection updates, it will trigger a new update messages. So that's kind of nice. Uh, and of course, I have catch handling here. So if something wrong happens, I'm returning a different, um, uh, a different action. And in catch, I have to use observable of. It has to return an observ observable. I'm not sure why, really. Uh, but that's, that is how it works. Um, so the cool thing here is we can do things differently using observables. First of all, it's really nice to work with. You just return the different observables from Horizon and it works uh, very well. And even better if you understand <laughs> everything about observables. Um, but maybe I want to stop watching, um, watching these messages. And the way I would do that is I would bring in a different stream here, just call it stop messages, which listens to the stop messages action. Uh, so now this is a stream of stop messages. And what I can do is I can say that, okay, you should grab from this messages collection until something happens on the stop messages stream. And the thing is that this is a subscription and I would have to dispose of this uh, subscription um, to stop watching. And the way I do that is using this take until. Uh, and that's kind of cool. And, and this definitely works and it's a, actually a really nice way to reason about these kinds of things. But uh, I'm still having trouble understanding, like if I would do this in Cerebral, I would create a service. 
that, for example, I wanted to create channels, um, um, chat channels. I would have a service that opens a channel and inside that uh, service I would like, and it's imperative, and I would just create a watch on that channel and I would store it in like a map. So when I later uh, uh, imperatively say close channel, I could just dispose of that subscription inside the service. But here I'm not uh, quite sure how I would do it. Like now I am basically disposing uh, these messages subscription. But what if it's dynamic? Like I want to have this watch, maybe we could call it watch channels instead. And I wanted to dynamically stop these subscription subscriptions based on me closing different channels in the UI. Uh, because I, I can't have like a constant for every channel that just won't work. So uh, I, there are still things I don't understand here. Ja, jag kommer. Sorry about that. Um, I'm going to eat some breakfast, and my girlfriend is getting pretty upset. Uh, oh yes, but anyways, there. Um, I, there are still things I don't understand here, but. There are still things uh, I, you need to really understand about observables to effectively use a library like this. And that just gives a, a way higher threshold to getting into it. But it seems to give you a lot of power because you can debound stuff, you can filter out stuff very easily. And when you're working with an observable API like Horizon, it should give a lot of power. Um, but yeah. That's the thoughts and ideas I have after looking into this and I hope it was useful to you.